Hello and welcome to Infinity. Sometimes it's useful to select by saturation rather than by luminosity, which is more common. And in this picture here, you can see the reds are going to be here pretty saturated. Maybe a bit some of the greens, maybe a bit in the blue sky. And the way to understand saturation is if this is one pixel, then you're going to get of the red, green and blue is going to be in the middle. One's going to be the minimum and others going to be the maximum. And this gap between the minimum and the maximum, which defines the saturation. When these are all the same level, then the saturation is zero, which means it's monochrome. When they're pushed furthest apart, then you can say it is saturated and the gap is at the maximum. So you push this one down to zero and that one all the way up to 100%. Then you get a fully saturated a very bright colour. So it's sometimes talk about the reverse of saturation is colourfulness. Anyway, let's go in here and very simply the way you do this, go to Live Filters and Procedural Texture. I'm going to put in a very, very simple formula. I want to find that gap in the middle between the minimum and the maximum. So I just say maximum of red, comma, green, comma, blue minus the minimum. In. And this doesn't look quite right yet, because I need to apply this to green and blue as well. So I've got the red there, so I click green and the blue. Now you can see the whitest areas of this are where it is most saturated. And there's also another way you can do this as well. Just to show you can do this is to go to this, put brackets around that, and then divide that by the maximum again. And this will give you a more accentuated form. So you can see here the saturated areas are selected more, if you like, where white is greater selection value. So all we do with this then is I go to whichever one you want, layer and merge visible. And this turns this into a pixel layer here. I can turn off the procedural texture. I can do further editing on this if I want to. I can paint things black to be sort of effectively deselect them or do whatever else I want to do on this. I can even do some blending on this if I want to. But what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to right click on it and turn it into a mask. So rasterize to mask. And this forms a mask. And this, because it's like a layer like this at the moment, you can see here the red areas are strongly selected and these other areas perhaps not quite so much. So let me just put that at the bottom for now so we can see where we are. I'm going to put in some curves and put the curves there at the top so it's going to affect everything. But I want to mask that so I pull the mask up and drop that on top there. And now if I move this around here, I'm now applying the curves to the saturation. So for example, if I pull this over this way, so I'm making it lighter. You can see there where, but it's selecting, it's being applied more to the saturated areas. So your greater application. Another interesting, useful way to do this is to pull this right down here. And now I've got quite an interesting dark picture here where those saturated areas are quite dark. And if I wanted to bring back the rest of the area, then I could also, if you look at the, the histogram here, then you can see that there's a not much up there. So if I go here to levels, I can pull this down here and bring back the rest of the picture. So you can see there, for example, the skin is about right but I've darkened those saturated areas. So I got quite a different picture very quickly, just from those two there, from the original there to this. So that is the power of working with saturation. Hope that was interesting and thank you very much for watching.